let's dive into the realm, the magical realm, the rise of the fallen. The biggest question is, what is this book all about, right? Well, it's a cultural fusion. It's a modern twist with an ancient battle of good and evil. Picture this. Let's just quickly, just if you want, you can close your eyes and let's just picture this. Oh, Dada. Mumbai, this big city, this lovely city of yours, is infiltrated with magnificent angels, savage asuras, and rakshasas. Can you picture that? Yeah? With the gateway of hell wide open, a great revolution against the gods has been. And our protagonist, or let's just call him, simply call him our hero in the book, Rinat. Just remember this. Well, to our guests, writers, bookstagrammers. What made you write your first book? Um, so I've been a storyteller in various capacities. For the past decade, I've been an actor. I dabbled in writing, directing, producing, did all of that for a while. Um, and I was very fascinated by the idea of creation, building, development, and I like the idea of taking the initiative rather than always waiting for something to come to you. And then the pandemic hit, and we all know how that was for all of us. It wasn't, it wasn't the best of times. You're just stuck at home, you're, you're consuming excessive content, is really input, right? you're watching, you're, you're reading, but there was no vent, uh, you know, there was, no, there was no creative vent at all. And uh, and that's when I just I just had this bizarre idea of, of, of this world that I wanted to create from all my inspiration. So I thought, you know what, why don't I just put them all together, uh, see where it goes, and, uh, and, and, and yeah, and then, you know, it, it was, that, that was that's what actually gave me some kind of purpose and drive through through the through COVID. I would wake up at five and sit there to write. Gave me some kind of some sense of passion. I remember even um, when I actually had COVID, I would uh, pop dolos. And when you pop dolo, you know you have this brief window when you feel like the fever has subsided. And then I would quickly jump and write a few lines to feel a little fulfilled. Ah, okay, today's work to come here. And then you know, and then feel terrible again. But uh, I think that was a very exciting process, very fulfilling process and besides that, no one was giving me 300 crores to make a film out of it, so I thought let's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Hansel sir, uh, you know, what is the first thing that you wrote or created and what drew you towards it, that particular subject? You know, a uh, couple of things. One, uh, I am a lazy writer, so I usually uh, trouble writers <laughs> a lot. I make them uh, write for me. I have written uh, well, very early on in my career I wrote uh, some short stories which I film. I did I write primarily the film. And uh, I wrote a film called Red. So that nobody was willing to write. Uh, so I sort of had to write with a deadline. I had to, had to submit the script in 2005. I had no choice but to write. And uh, the film got made in 2017. So, 12 years after that. How, how long did it take to write? Like, two days. They, uh, they, they wanted it in two days and I lied to the producer saying the script is ready. So, that was my... Uh, so, writing came more out of compulsion. Uh, but otherwise, I, I always marvel that writing as a discipline. You know, I am a reader, I am a voracious reader. And, uh, I find writing uh, an amazing discipline to just sit down and write those pages and to churn out. You know? For me, writing is about having the discipline of churning out the next number of pages day after day, day after day. And I, have, I must have at least uh, 15 incomplete scripts and books on my desktop which I carry around, which uh, I uh, sort of you know, make as a retirement you know, member. Whenever I retire, I will finish all this. I will publish books and I will uh, sell my scripts, but uh, I don't see myself retiring. And then you shouldn't, of course, because we would, we would be, you know. Uh, and you know, one more thing, the question that she asked is what would you like to see in Bombay? Yeah, yeah. More bookshops. That's true. Yeah. Round of applause for that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was essentially it, uh, it was an amazing culture that the city. And a big part of our city's culture, uh, you know, book, bookstores. Like, uh, I remember when I was in school, there was a bookstore uh, uh, on 
yes, we don't call you Indian kids too. We used to go there, hang out there. And all those spaces are gone. Uh, you know, Lotus Book uh, House, which was a declamation. We used to spend hours there. I mean, that's where the first set of Khala Kazala uh, emerged from. The first set of recipes were chosen from there. And you know, just sitting there, looking at the books. Uh, and they never stopped you from sitting there and reading those books. And it's dying, I mean, we are ordering it online. Losses. I find that I find that uh, great progress, but also uh, hindering uh, the joy of experiencing uh, books. Uh, great that you know there is a bookshop in such a big space uh, that is still alive and kicking in the city of Bombay. Well, lovely, lovely, uh, lovely words, uh, sir. Thank you so much for these words. And uh, so, Abhishek, to you. Uh, you know, how did you kind of mix, uh, because uh, with how much I've read, you know, you know it's, it's a mix of kind of mythology, myths, legends, uh, with modernity. So, you know, how did you come up with those ideas, like, what, tell me a little bit about the process so that you know, everyone would love to hear. So, I mean, I was always a fan of mythology, Hindu, Western, I read a lot of Amar Chitrakathas going on growing up. Uh, Marvel comics, I watched the Marvel films, you know, I, I'm a big fantasy fan generally. And uh, I think he started off with what if and why not, like you see all of this happening in New York City. So I was like, why can't it happen in Amchi Mumbai? It's, it's, it started off with that. And um, it's just picking up and pushing that uh, boundary a little further each time, right? I would, I would uh, think about the fact that what if Satan who's like the first fallen angel, right? What if he conspired with an Asura to take over the city of Mumbai, starting a revolution against the gods? And uh, in like amidst all this, there is this 26-year-old hyper-anxious copywriter working in an ad agency, a Bombay-bred boy, who's caught in the middle of all this, right? And he's, and anxiety also is something that we, I think a lot of us deal with these days. So amidst everything, a very simpleton like him, He's caught in the middle of this this celestial warfare. It just it's 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 to say that you know all of this is going on, so it could happen to anyone like you, me, every like anyone over here. So then, what would the outcome be? So it was many, many things like this, right? It's almost like um, I mean, if it's almost obvious, the most obvious thing is if an asura were to come from hell to earth, the first thing he or she would do would buy a mitabai banana. You know, because it's like, why would, why, why would he not? He doesn't get what I in hell. So I mean, it, it seems like this, like, why not? What if? Why not? What if? Um, and I think all these things just somehow came together and it just, it became what it is. Yeah. And you, one of the good things about writing the fusing modern and mythology is that, uh, you know, in today's times when you have to be very careful about making political statements, uh, it's a great way to say it and also make it look like a fantasy. Because it's fast becoming a fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but what's your relationship with the myths as well, sir? Like what's your relationship with myths, legends, you know, like we grown up uh, reading myths and legends and you know, imagining that like, you know, uh, they uh, are the uh, you know founding uh, the foundation of your imagination. The ability to uh, look at the world not in uh, such uh, you know flesh and bone. You know they they transport. So I grew up with that. I mean, Amarjitra Gatha of course was so much, so much that we read, so much that we travelled. You know, whether it was with Tintin or whether it was with the Mahabharat, whether it was with Asterix or Babylix, uh, or whether it was Mad Magazine. Uh, you know, you always. Uh, traveled uh, world. You know, I always imagine myself as Tintin. You know, traveling into, into time, into a place, you know, finding things. I mean, Indiana Jones uh, always fascinated me as a character until they made the last one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, I think uh, mythology is the basis of all our storytelling. We, have such a rich uh, uh, heritage of mythology, such a rich heritage of mythology that uh, uh, I am glad 
uh, you know writers like Abhishek, you and you know fewer writers are embracing this form and you know giving it a new uh, twist. Otherwise, you know we the, it leads to stagnancy. The the uh, the same myths are repeated and we keep hopping. We keep making that past a part of our culture. I think the importance of reinterpreting, reimagining, and creating myth. I mean, that's what fascinated me uh, to this book. You know that uh, you know how about a gangster uh, story set in Mumbai? Mumbai gangster story, but it's not Satya. Uh, you know, and set uh, in uh, a mythical time. You know, a victory of good over evil, which is a story, of course, a gangster story, but it's set uh, in another time. And I think that is fascinating. Uh, you know that you take the myth and you sort of connect it to the world uh, that you're living. In. And that's what we do all the time. We're living. We're, we're living in Mahabharat. We are being forced to believe in Ramayana. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we need more myths. <laughs> Any project that you are working on regarding myths? Well, uh, like him, I don't get enough money to make my books. <laughs> So let's hope that uh, any producers looking out there, uh, please give Mahatma Gandhi, he's fast becoming mythology for us. Oh yes, that's the next uh, oh, He's becoming mythology because people almost believe that it did not exist. Yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of mythical uh, elements of, in the book, Abhishek, uh, especially angels, right? I mean, uh, so how do they play a significant part in the book? Because, you know, when you, I write a lot of Hindu, or Hindu myths myself, you know, and I'm a Christian, by the way. So it's something like, uh, how did, uh, I believe you are Hindu, right? Uh, yeah, you're Hindu, that's just kind of funny. <laughs> but, yeah, so are you, are you writing an angel? So it's very interesting, like, what was the dynamics, what was, what do the angels play a significant part in the book? Um, I think, again, coming back to what all I was fascinated by, I am fascinated by your angelology, as, as they call it. Uh, so, whether it's Western mythology, Hindu mythology, Greek, all, all of it alike. So, I've, I've, I've taken kind of bits and pieces from all of that. Um, and uh, I think the idea of angels, it's, it's basically that, what if... The, the concept of fallen angels comes in the Bible, right? Satan, the first of the fallen, has been sent down and then he's kind of banished into hell. And um, and I thought, why can't that be integrated with these other elements? You've got, um, you've got uh, celestial offspring, celestial parents, which is something that is there also in the Mahabharata. You see the Pandavas, each one has a celestial parent, right? Um, so that element is there. Asuras and Rakshasas, that element is from Hindu mythology. And angels, of course, is from. So the idea was to bring all of it together. It is the concept of hell and heaven exists, I think, throughout wherever you go. The idea of uh, good versus evil that is something that exists throughout. So why can't you just take bits and fuse them up together? And more than that, also, it was a great way. It was kind of the inciting incident, or a great way to begin the story because the fallen angels they kind of uh, they are in cahoots with the asuras and rakshasas and they, the gateway of hell opens and they unleash themselves onto Mumbai. So the story begins from there. So it felt like a, a great way to start the book. And uh, what, so what would be your advice to the young artist out there, you know, who might be you know, recovered everywhere, so anything you would like to get inspiration? I think uh, it's just doing, uh, you know, what Nike says, just do it. I think that is important. Doing is so important. So very often we think, why, why am I not a writer? Because I haven't done it. You know, you sit there, it's a lonely job. You sit, you write, you stare at a blank page, you feel sometimes, you know, you revisit what you do, say, terrible. And then you go back and write. You write, you rewrite, you, you know, and that, I think that sheer uh, discipline is what every artist needs to never give up, to continue doing, uh, that is important. And of course, it needs, uh, ultimately it needs a patron. I mean, as a publishing house, uh, what you are doing, it needs many more such people to bring that work out, you know. Uh, 
every piece of art has an audience, whether it's one person or a million people. I think you have to write it for that one person first, which is yourself. Do it for yourself. You are that. You are the first member uh, of the audience. You are the first consumer. You are the first reader. Do it for yourself. A million will follow. But continue doing it. You know, don't give up. If you can read what you've written, then 